Hey guys, how's it going? Just getting set up here again. Just getting comments going so I can see them. I was over on my channel. Hold on a second. Okay, awesome. Is it working? Can everybody hear me? Is it okay? No, it's Mother's Day. Probably you're hanging out with your moms. Hey Nick, how you doing, man? Welcome, welcome. Okay. Yes. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the the polygroup method. I Michael DeFeo is such a cool guy. I'm I've hung out with him a couple times at CTN and here and there, and just talked to him online. He's a really great guy, and uh, I'm I'm super jealous that he does uh, traditional sculpting as well like he sculpts out of marble and it's just the patience it takes to do that is just absurd so but i would like to try it someday um so i haven't done much since i left off uh because as you if you saw today i launched my first video of my my pre-launch up to my course so uh, if you guys haven't checked that out you can check that out Hey, Squid Tank, how you doing? Oh, thank you so much, Pixel Desire. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, so I was just checking this out. I, I haven't done anything since last week. Um, well, I lied. I, I colored this collar a little bit. That's all, just to match this. But that's pretty much all I did. Um, but yeah, I've been working crazy diligently on getting my course launched. It's... So there's making the course and then there's launching the thing. And wow, it's almost as much work to launch it as it is to make it. I had no idea what that world even consisted of, but <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting to know it. So, um, hey Blands, how's it going? Welcome, welcome. Okay, so uh, when I ended off last week, I noticed that these, these bracers are facing forward and I think they are better when they are facing like, uh, oh, okay, sure. Let me, let me give you the link, duh. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. Here it is. Boom. So, yep, yep. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> it's just a really short little video talking about how I block out characters with primitive shapes. That's the first one. The second one will be out on a Wednesday. So sorry you guys have to wait so long. So I just watched Caesar DeCall Jr. I don't know if I've seen that. That name rings a bell. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so I'm, I'm just rolling these around to the side and then I will, I'll need to munge them. That's a, that's a word, right? Munge? I need to munge them back into place. Munging. Sorry, I'm in a weird mood. I've, I've had a ton of really cool, um, I'm really, I, I've had a ton of really cool comments on my course like if you look down below if you've seen it um yeah it's, it's really made my day just a lot of people have super nice things to say and then email comments and uh just just unexpected you never know what's going to happen you know when you when you make something um 
and you, you send it out into the world, I guess not too unlike a, a child, all of you mothers, <laughs> uh, you know, you, you do the best you can and send it out into the world and hope people enjoy it, you know? So it's the, the real thing is coming. It's, it's huge. So does, oh, hey, what's the name? Fattle one or fat, fat one? I'm sorry if I'm, uh, does, does it come into play with the ruler? Does the video that I, that I just sent out, does it talk about the ruler? Uh, I don't really, or are you asking if the ruler has a width that you, here, I'll show you. I have it in this file right here. So this is the ruler and she is huge in this file. She is huge. Um, Oh, fatal. Okay, fatal one. Oh yeah, I see. Okay, fatal one. That's a that's a cool name. Sorry, I didn't mean to butcher it. <laughs> oh. Thanks, Squid Tank. Um, so this ruler, what I use, I use the ruler for uh measuring my characters. Um obviously. The the ruler is two well, it's in centimeters. So you can think of it like two meters tall or 20 centimeters tall or 200 millimeters tall. So when I use this ruler for printing, and I actually get into this a lot in the course, but I'm trying not to talk too much about the course because this is Pixelogic's channel and you know I'm trying to talk about ZBrush and how cool ZBrush is. And But ZBrush is fantastic for setting up your models to print. Um, and, but the one, one problem with ZBrush is it doesn't have units, right? It, uh, it, it has generic ZBrush units. So you, you need to measure it out. You need to have something in your scene that is definite. And then everything is relative to that, uh, to everything is relative. Sorry, I keep reading and getting distracted. Okay. So everything is relative to that ruler. So to answer your question, if you added a pedestal, what you would do is you could put it at the feet. Here, I'll, I'll make one really quick. I would just show you what you would do. So if I append a star, let's say, and then no, the star is not the base. And then I changed this into a X cylinder. Um, if you're wondering what I just did there, this is, uh, this is under initialize. That's why it's called entitled. It's really under initialize. So if you come way down here, go to initialize, you can make these uh, just pre-made primitive objects. And I just made a cylinder. So if I were to make this into a base, kind of like a, an, an infinity base, right? I think that's what you're asking. How would you use the ruler to print it? It's a great question. So let's say she was an infinity character, but she's way too tall to be an infinity character. Infinity characters were on average about 90, 90 ish millimeters tall. And she is going on 180 millimeters right now, which is huge. It's like, <laughs> it's big. So what you would want to do is you would want to put the base inside the ruler, meaning the ruler is creating a bounding, a bounding box inside your scene. And you would want to, that, that base, whatever that you make, you would want that inside the bounding box of the ruler. So you would have that base be here and then you would move her entire character and you would scoot it up so her feet match the bottom of that base. And her, the top of her head could not go outside of that ruler. I hope that makes sense. And then when you export it, I'll just show you really quick over here. So pretend I moved her up in space. And how I would do that is I, was, I would use the transpose master tool, which is right here. That's what I use to pose, but it's also what I use to move the characters around in space. So you'd hit this button right here, this T pose mesh. You'd go all the way down to all your lower level resolution. And you, that way you can grab the entire model and move it up in space. And then you hit the T pose to sub T to push it back again to all the highs. And then she would be on this base contained within the ruler. And then you go to this, where is it? 3D print hub. 
and you can see it says millimeters right here. Well, you know that that ruler is 200 millimeters tall. So you would set this to 200 millimeters. And then every, yeah, the width does not matter. The width does not matter. So it's just the height. Yeah, I, <laughs> I gave you the really long answer to your, your width question. So does the width matter? Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, anyway, yeah, so you can just, you can just type in 200 and, and then export it and you have your print. So, and I don't think any of my models or any of our models at Disney Interact Disney Interactive were, were wider than 200 millimeters. I'm trying to recall, but yeah, it's just, it's just height. So I, I don't know. It's something to experiment with, I guess. I don't know if you have a, a character that's wider than it is tall or something, but anyway, I hope that answers your question. But the ruler comes in super duper handy for, for printing. Yeah, no, no problem. Okay. So I was thinking today we could either work on the, well, we can finish out the shoulder things like the, the octopus right here with the little leather flanges and the little metal bits down here, or we could work on the sword. Um, what do you guys, what do you guys want me to work on today? What do you think? Or I could work on little bits like these gold little bands and the earrings and this necklace. Um, we could work on the pants and the belt and the knee pads. Everything needs to be built. So just whatever. Okay. Let's see. So using transpose master, you want to have sub tools, correct? Uh, you want to have sub tools. You want to have subdivisions. So it's best if your character is not made up of dynameshed objects. Does that make sense? So, um, yeah, so Subtool Master likes when it has subdivisions. So, um, I was actually thinking about doing that. There's, there's kind of a step-by-step -step process in how you get subdivisions back into a dynameshed object. So I, it's, I go over it in the course for sure, but, um, I don't know if I have it anywhere else, but if I, if I do it here, I'll, I'll point it out so you can check it out. Let's see. Can I make two sub tools, different materials, like making one part basic material and the other part plastic material. So are you talking about physically or are you talking about ZBrush materials? Because you can, you can do two separate materials on, you can, do, you can make two objects have separate materials. You can make two sub tools have separate materials or you can even paint a material on an object. Yeah, so uh, the only time I ever fill an object with a material is if it's something special like the eyes. See how her eyes are filled with a, an eye material to give it that reflection. Everything else I'm just using Skin Shade 4 that comes with ZBrush. And the reason I do that is because I don't want to fill this with any material so I can change it if I want to. So if I want to say, select this reflect red, cause it's obvious, see how that changed everything. If I had filled these arms, let's say I'm gonna fill these arms with red. Okay. I'm gonna grab my, my paintbrush just so I have it. I'll, and I'll hit M for material. And then if I fill this object, I'm on the arms. Well, I'm on the whole body, I guess. So on this whole body, if I fill it, with red fill object and that's, you can't really tell there's a difference, but it filled the object with a material. Now, if I go back to skin shade four, see what happens. It's, it's still red. It's still, uh, and you can think of a material like a, um, like a paint cover over. So it, it still has poly paint. It still has the skin tone, but it's being wrapped with a material right now. So if you ever do this, by accident or on purpose and you want to get rid of it. That's why I have this flat color here. See this flat color. If I change her to flat color and I, then I select the body and I fill it, make sure you have material selected and I fill it with flat color. That's going to reset the material on her to be not filled with any material at all. So now if I go back and select like this shiny, it's going to fill everything with shiny. Hey, Look who it is, everybody. How's it going, Ash? 
Ash in the his house. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, Ashley, I'm in a weird mood tonight. Um, so as you uh, as you move through these materials, you can see that the eyes are staying filled with that eye material. So Dr. Jones a lot, I hope that uh, that clears it up. Let me know if you still have any more questions. But that is why I usually use, yeah, we, we let's get weird. <laughs> like, reminds me of uh, Rick and Morty. Let's get weird. All right. Uh, let's see. So did you guys ever say, did you want me to work on the, the sword or the shoulder things? Or what are you thinking? What do you guys want to see tonight? <laughs> Super meat boy. Um, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Sword. All right. Let's work on the sword. Okay. I'm going to build the sword. Hey, blue fire. Oh, you want me to? So I'm probably going to build that little squid guy last. I don't know. He's he's super funny, but um, I'll I'll probably build him last. So I'm going to build this sword right in the center, so I can use the symmetry. So I'm going to build it right right down here, and then I'll move it into her hand later on. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I I will eventually build that squid dude. He's he's way cool. He's awesome. I love that he has bands, like, you know, like earring bands on his tentacles, just like she has in her hair. It, this this design of uh, Johannes's is very, very good. <laughs> I love it. He gave a breakdown of how he paints stuff the other day. I don't know if you guys follow him, um, but he went through his process. And I swear that guy is a rendering engine in his brain. He renders stuff in 3D in his brain and just like, dumps it out in layers, like Photoshop layers. He paints ambient occlusion on here, like from his head, like he's a rendering engine. It's so, so absurd. It makes a lot of sense, you know, because that's what, that's what everything does in real life. But my goodness, that was just crazy. All right. Need some more go juice. Okay, let's get going. But I'm glad you guys are asking questions tonight. I love it right away. So, uh, I'm going to, so Ashley, what are you up to tonight? What's, what's the word on the street? Yeah, it's super cool. You should, I, I don't know if he puts his process up on art station or not. Anyway, it's Johannes Helgeson. So you can see this Helgeson art down here. His name is Johannes Helgeson and he does some of the best lighting I've ever seen in a painting. It's so good. Okay. So I appended the star again, just like I did with that base. And this time I'm going to make a cube. So I'm going to go to initialize, initialize. Okay. And then uh, Q cube. And let's make a cube down here. I think all sub tools must be same material, but you can paint different materials on different sub tools. Yeah, you can paint I mean, you can fill different sub tools with different materials. That's, that's for sure. What I'm, what I'm just recommending from my experience is I don't typically fill anything with a, with a material. I just poly paint it. I just use poly paint to get my colors. These, this is all poly paint and it's all filled with uh, skin shade four, except for the eyes. That's the only thing that is that's filled with something else and sometimes i guess if you want to get a little more i don't know realistic or something i mean i could fill the blade and all the metal parts with something a little shinier you know like some kind of a metal or something but i typically don't especially with uh, disney infinity everything was matte anyway so it made it easy <laughs> just chilling out i need to chill out i I released the first video of the lead into my course today. And so that's kind of why I'm in a weird mood is because I'm, I'm a little stressed out, but people seem to be digging it. So it's uh it's good. All things good. 
So I appreciate all the people that have checked it out and given me feedback on it. Makes me makes me hopeful that it was it'll be all worthwhile in the end. Okay, so I'm just I'm just kind of making this cube. Uh, as I'm just getting proportions of the blade. I'm kind of eyeballing how how long this blade is, and uh, in relation to her, and then how long the handle is in relation to her. So that's what's in my brain. I'm just letting you know. Uh, I might move this up here and turn on transparent so I can kind of see. Cause it's kind of from her waist to the top of her head is that's how long the blade is so from her waist to about there then it's pretty thin all right and it's about that wide maybe no no pixelogic peeps in the house tonight it's like Kyle's probably with his mom tonight where which he should be I <laughs> think thank you guys all for for dropping by here on Mother's Day I know it's kind of hard and Sunday nights are kind of hard um, so I appreciate you stopping by especially if it's weird times for you um, so not this coming week. Well, I might do a couple, but the week after that, I'm going to be, I have plans to stream a lot on my own as well. So I hope that happens. But, uh, let's see. I'm trying to decide how I'm going to do, how I'm going to do this squid right here. And it's got, it's got three tentacles instead of four which everything else he's designed has four. Like you can see in the, in the shoulder has four. Um, and this guy has four. <laughs> Chase, how's it going, man? I know the travesty, right? Oh, how you been? This is Jason. Uh, I've, I've known Jason for quite a while. Gosh, how long has it been? And many moons. Let's see. And Jason worked at uh, Jason worked at Disney Infinity for Disney Infinity Disney Interactive for a little while, too. So let's see. I want to. Hmm. Okay. Let me. I'm just going to add a cylinder down here. <laughs> Thanks, Isla Sky. I'm sure she'll appreciate that. <laughs> uh. All right. There we go. <laughs> this looks like a a LARPing sword. <laughs> Should I give her a LARPing sword? Like those big foam. <laughs> okay. Then, yeah, big paddle. It's like those swords on uh, Final Fantasy, right? Those big square ones. Some giant thing. Okay, let's see. I'm going to block this out with, uh, with primitive objects. So I'm just going to see how it goes. I'm going to practice what I preach. So I'm getting a cylinder. And I'm going to start wrapping this guy around. See how it's kind of around the blade. I'm going to push this into position. And then I'm going to add another cylinder for the head. And then a couple more for the eyes, just like I did. I might even copy them off of the bracers and move them over here. And then, um, and then I'll block out spheres and just pull them out for each of these tentacles and these little these little ear guys and then for the for the hilt as well hey hired gun 
Watch your first training video, and I really liked it. Very professional and informative. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Much appreciated. Yeah, like I said, I just released, so it's one of three free videos kind of leading up to my course sales. I've never really done a, a course marketing that way before, but um, so far it's it's been pretty cool. Gives you guys a taste of kind of how I, well, besides this stream, it gives you guys a taste of how I teach, which is cool. This is super organic, but I'm gonna kind of get, see how there's, there's edges around here? I'll try and get it, get, bring those edges in later after I get it blocked in. But it's almost like he's wrapping another tentacle around the sword on, you know, behind him. So I wanna get that. Gosh, why is it freaking out? Stop freaking out. And I'm not doing music this time. I got lashings for doing it last time. I didn't even know it was on because I was playing with it before the chat, you know? And I guess I apparently either started it when I didn't realize it or I just left it on and not, not realized it. So I apologize for that. It was just going in the background. I have no idea what it was. It could have been like some super crass rap songs and stuff and I wouldn't have even known it. And then the P Pixelogic Cops would have came to my house. Okay. So I'm just gonna be, enjoy the silence, I guess. Okay. So the sword is kind of right in his head. <laughs> Sir Anubis, welcome man. Uh, Yeah, right? I love that song. Enjoy the silence. I'll just sing instead. <laughs> I'll live a wanted. <laughs> oh, sorry. I said I was in a weird mood. Oh. Watch at your own risk. <laughs> now you got that song in my head thanks <laughs> I actually really like that song it's good I wish we could listen to commercial music while we stream let's see this is looking a little on the phallic side right now just gonna say right now um Let's squish this a little bit. So I gotta tell you a story about that. I was, uh, I wonder where's the kid you muted. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be crazy, I gotta see if it will. Cause I sound just like Depeche Mode. That's why, right? Okay, I'm going to try uh, appendage. If you hold down snap, or when you, if you hold down shift as you drag these things out, it will snap it. See, we're ready, shift. It'll snap it. And then if I push back in, it's actually making it thinner. See how it's thinner now? <laughs> Catching me live. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. How do you say your name? Tunor? Tuanor? <laughs> I know, right? I'm out. I'm done. Done with this sculpt and business. Okay. This is that trick again where I hold down Alt with move selected and bend it. I'm going to bend it. Ooh. Okay. So this is why I don't leave the, the ends of the transpose 
uh, map the transpose line at the ends of the object because if when you when you skew something, it's actually like a bell curve. Hey, how's it going, NLT? Reginator, man, everybody's here now. You guys are probably over there watching Lena. I hope I didn't pull any of her watchers away. See that? See it's a instead of going like like straight and then down, it's like it's bending it down completely all together. It's hard to explain. But there you go. Whoops. Rotate. It's going to look like Squidward for a minute. How did I do it again? Oh, what keys? I just down, I, I just held down alt. I don't have my keyboard going. Okay. Hold on a second. It's been a, it's been a crazy day guys. It's been a crazy day. And oh, let's see. No keyboard. Um, I'll, I'll explain as I do this, uh, on screen keyboard, keyboard, what's it called? MMO. Okay, there it is. It's no board. I gotta remember that. You have to hold down Alt and then drag the white circle in the center of the transpose line, and then it will skew it. So basically it'll lock down both ends and it will skew the center, which is kind of like bending it. So, okay, here we go. Is it working now? I probably, there it is. Awesome, okay, there we go. Now you can see what, I, what I'm pushing. <laughs> All right, a cool little keyboard. You should get one of those Ash. <laughs> I don't know, should you? I don't know if it's distracting or if it's helpful. Okay, this is too fast. <laughs> Sorry, sick everybody on you. Yeah, yeah, you should get one. I can tell you how, what, 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 I was, see the, see the keyboard on my screen now? Like, let's see, like over there, like way over there. I love, I love how you drag your head and your whole thing over there. When you, when you did that to point, it made me laugh. <laughs> anyway, I just have this, I just have this on screen keyboard so you can see. So you can see when I'm pushing. And you, you might be able to see that I'm holding down shift and I start to smooth and then I let go and I'm still smoothing. That's what, uh, that's what Paul Gabery calls the smart smooth. It's like a different algorithm that only people in the cool club know about. Do you need to start a straw poll? <laughs> totally. Straw poll. Just have it. Sorry, I've turned them against you. My fault. Okay. Now I'm gonna duplicate this. So turning off symmetry, if you hold down control and you drag, it's gonna copy whatever is not masked. Then you can invert the mask. Well, invert the mask, hit control W and put it in its own poly group. Hired gun. How's it going? Good to see you. Yes, you are welcome. Even on Mother's Day, I'm here for you guys. A 
and thank you for taking time out of your day to come come watch me babble on about keyboards and stuff <laughs> okay now if I mirror and weld boom I have three <laughs> polygon mother oh. <laughs> that's awesome I got to turn symmetry back on there we go I like turning the wireframe off sometimes too see this is the best sword ever I want to get it to flare out and be kind of uh, kind of a wedge shape <laughs> no what what were you thinking Sometimes I wonder why I was actually going to be an I was trained to be an architect once because when I was in, when I just graduated in high school uh I'd always drawn in high school I was like you know I was raised in a small town so I was like the town artist one of three people that could draw so but everybody's like you'll never make money as an artist you should do something else so I'm like well what's the closest thing I could do to art that's not art. I'm like, hey, architect, yeah. So I went to this uh, Phoenix Institute of Technology for architectural drafting. And it was horrible, it was horrible. Because the whole time I was sitting in class and I was like doodling and sketching and drawing stuff and the teachers were like, why aren't you over in the graphic design program? Why are you here? And I'm, I'm like, you know what, you're right. I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here. So I went to, I, I came back from, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> we'll start with the letter A. <laughs> like holding your, closing your eyes and pointing. Mm. I actually didn't get into 3D animation until I was 28, 27, 28, something like that. <clears throat> and that was, yeah, going to school back at that time. Um, I'm older than you might think. <laughs> it was back in like, uh, let me think, 90, 91, 92 maybe. And I was I was into airbrushing back in the day. And I, I had an airbrushing business and I would airbrush those silly, those silly things on cars and stuff and motorcycles and leather jackets. Okay, let's see. I haven't done that for a long time though. A long time. That was fun. I'd go to car shows and I'd paint. I'd airbrush people's cars on their sh on shirts. Like people that actually brought their cars to the show. Like I, they would, this was back when the, when Polaroids were, were a thing. Oh, hey, hey, Aspie, how's it going, man? Welcome. I've got some new links for you. You probably, you probably got my email today, right? Yeah, it was, it was cool. It was a, it was a fun time, you know? It, and when you're that young, I think I was like 21, 22. And I would pull in about, I don't know, two grand for the weekend. I mean, that was, I, granted, I was standing for 10 hours a day for three days, just airbrushing on shirts, you know, and my, my finger would get all fatigued. <laughs> and, uh, but it was, it was decent money at the time, you know. Hey, Zomax, how's it going? Vince, okay, how do you say your name? Vincity, awesome. Thanks, sir. Welcome to the stream. I paint unicorns and wizards and dragons. On the... I <laughs> that was that was a little before my time. I didn't I didn't paint any vans or anything like that. Uh, it's uh, the the probably the closest thing that I did to that was uh, I painted on the back of an RV, like you know, a big giant RV. I painted a an, a mural on the back of an RV. It was like the 
oh, I'm trying to remember. It was like the uh, Native American on the horse, and they're both like hanging their heads. Yeah. So those vans were when you were 21. Yeah, that was, <laughs> with the moon shaped windows and stuff. <laughs> those were awesome. Okay, I need to turn the wireframe back on because I need to chop this up to give it its shape. Let's see. Creeper vans. <laughs> yeah, that's what my wife calls them too. Creeper vans. It's like the vans that are parked at the parks. The creepers all hanging out like the, like the it clown. <laughs> oh, cool. You, you just check that out. Ma How do you say your name? Matthias Zadikoff? Did I say that right? <laughs> Here, let me, uh, let me give you a link to what he's talking about. Mm -mm -mm. So I just released my first video in my free training this weekend, just today. Today. And here it is. You can sign up for that and watch the first video today. And then there's two more videos coming and then uh, it's leading up to my release of my course. So I'm super duper excited about that. It's been stressful. It's, it's been two years. I've been working on that course for two years. So long. But I'm pretty proud of it. And there's already people going through it. Oh, okay. No worries. You should check it out when you can. And I'm sorry for those people who have signed up for my brushes. You have to put your name and your email in. Um, you have to do it one more time to get this. And that's because my course is hosted on new course hosting place and they won't let me import names and emails from my the other place I have them so I have to ask people to opt in again so I apologize for that pain in the butt I know so right now I'm just trying to get whoops invert there we go I'm just trying to start to get the shape of the sword in You're fucking ready for that course. Oh man, I I honestly I'm I'm so excited for to see everybody and what they can do because my buddy Matthew Armstrong I'm gonna be posting what he's been making lately and uh, he's doing some fan art of of Diva from Overwatch and oh my goodness it is incredible. I mean Matt Matt is a professional concept artist but he is just learning. ZBrush through watching my course and he's taken to it like a fish to water and he yeah it's wow it's so good so good let's see um, if I push it that way it breaks okay thanks 3d oh wait my I think you have my Gumroad link wrong. Let's see, Pin my Pinterest. Oh, I think you just have the labels. They're offset. So the Twitch down one and the, there you go. <laughs> okay, but thank you very much. I think, uh, yeah, just the labels are the, the, way, the way it shifts them. It makes them kind of off. I don't know. So the links aren't wrong, but the labels are a little off. Okay, let's see. That tip is clear back here. I like to turn the poly loops on the angle that something is going rather than keeping them flat and parallel with each other. I like to radiate them out so it actually matches. And I'm not going to take this all the way to the tip because I'll extrude it and make a, an actual tip because this is still pretty thick. Like I said, I'm just trying to get this shape. And here's something. Um, when you're inserting a poly loop with the Z modeler brush, if you just click here, you can see that it's 
it's pretty much doing what I just said. It's, it's keeping it parallel. If you push shift, it will, depending on where you started the line, if you start on this side of the center, so the center is about right here. So if you start on this side and you hold down shift, it's gonna snap the line to be parallel with this one, see that? And if you start on this side of mid and you hold down shift, it's gonna push it more towards the upper one. So it's kind of like this, this snapping thing, it's super cool. I'm learning stuff like that more and more every day. It's just like, wow, this is Z-Modeler brush. Because the guy who wrote ZBrush, he, he doesn't sit and study other software. He just listens to people and people are like, you know, I really wish I could do this thing. And he'll do it his way. You know, he'll be like, huh, I think I can do that, you know. But he doesn't go, well, how did this software do it? He just goes, ah, let's just do it. Let's try it this way. And that's why, that's why ZBrush is so different from anything else, but it's also why it's so powerful, you know? Okay, let's see. I want to start to think about creating this channel down the blade and how I can do it. Because mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not quite used to the Z modeler brush completely yet. So I know I want to come down to about here. Whoa, putting all these lines in. Come down to about here and then split it off. So about right here. Let's see if I can just do maybe this. Okay, and I don't, I'm kind of, uh, I'm not quite sure how to cross these two and make an edge there. Do any of you guys know, if you, if you're, are you aware of how to do that? Let's see. Split. I know there's spin edges. But I can't see the edge I want to spin. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I'll figure it out. Merge the verts? Oh, you mean like, like merge these two? Okay, yeah, I know what you're saying. Um, I'm on like a stitch, like go like this. Brilliant. <laughs> All right, that'll work. Let's just finish it off. Boop. Yeah, that'll work. Is that what you me meant? Good enough. <laughs> okay. I, is there another way to connect those? Do you know? I wish I could just like, you know, in, in Maya, you can just go pop, 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 pop and draw across with that split tool. <laughs> Scope Master Flash. All right, polygroup. I'm gonna make this its own polygroup. Whoops. Okay, I, I hit all that stuff so I could see how far I'm pushing this in because I'm going to uh, in extrude polygroup all and just push this in. Actually, I'm gonna Q mesh it. Q mesh polygroup all. <laughs> I was thinking connecting the side lines to the center. Oh, okay. It's too heavy. Um, I'm going to insert 
some more edge loops. So I have something to snap to. There we go. Okay. I also want to collapse these edges down into one little thing, but let me see what happens. Collapse, poly loop. It's probably not going to work. Ah, went all the way around. Hey, let's see if you did, but how do you go about doing the cavity and teeth of a game character? That's a good question. Um, so, well, I'll, when I model the teeth, I just model them in here and I usually just do like a horseshoe shape because it's usually for the stylized characters. I don't model every single tooth. Um, sometimes I'll do gums and then I will, um, make the arcs of the, the tops of the teeth, like in the gums. So when, uh, when you push the white horseshoe shape up into the gums, it will look like it's teeth without having the line split in between. Um, that's what I usually do. And then uh, I will have those separate. So gums are separate and the teeth are separate. And uh, the tongue is usually just a separate piece that I just shove in there. But as far as the mouth cavity, um, what I'll usually do is I will take the head outside of ZBrush, like in Maya or something, and uh, retopologize it. And then when I retopologize the mouth, I will actually leave two poly loops across, um, all the way across, and then I will come back in here and I'll use the Z modeler brush to extrude into the head and make that cavity. I used to just do it in Maya, you can, you can still just do it in Maya, but um, I, I just, I'm trying to learn the Z modeler brush. So I keep pushing myself to learn it more and more. So like, cause I'll keep stumping myself, like with this blade, I'm like, how am I going to weld all these together in another program? I'm like, oh, sure. Just weld them together or collapse the edges. But in here I'm like, okay, how do I do that without doing it one by one, you know? So I hope that answers your question. Let me see. Just do this. Because that's essentially what I want to do right there. But I, I don't think I want to get it down to that tight of a, of a point. Um, so I'm just going to do that. I'll just do it really fast. Otherwise I'll be sitting here itching my head forever. Like, how do I do that? <laughs> Can't use panel loops to use panel loops to what? To, to make, to do what I just did. Yeah, no problem. To pull in the edge, I guess I don't understand what you mean. Sorry, panel loops. Okay. Okay, I'm going to extrude this. Oh, <laughs> just want to know you're not alone. Is that, have you, have you tried that? That's what I usually do. Sometimes when I'm making characters, like if I'm blocking out characters for the first time here and I'll, I'll show you, let me, let me make this, uh, the sword tip and then I'll, then I'll show you what I'm, what I'm thinking. It's real. it's pretty cool actually. Especially when I'm doing cartoon characters, there's a really fast way to do a mouth cavity. 
Uh, but when I'm doing human heads like this one, I'll usually leave it closed so I can get a nice mouth pose before I make the mouth cavity. So, um, plus if you're going to be doing any projecting, like projecting from highs to lows, uh, the, the lips, if they're overlapped, they'll project into each other and they'll just cause bad things to happen. Especially if you're dynameshing, they'll just dynamesh together and they'll get rid of the interior of the mouth altogether. And that's not what you want to do. So, but yeah, the Z modeler brush, I'm, I'm still just, I'm still pretty new at it. So let's see, extrude. I'm just going to extrude this, uh, this little tip out and then shrink it down. Ashley, are you still here? She's probably sculpting and listening to me. Or she went away. <laughs> One of the two. You are here. Hey, I was just wondering if you, I know you make your crazy monsters and stuff, but I wonder if you do anything uh, with the Z modeler brush or do you avoid it? That's my question for you. <laughs> Not to put you on the spot. Okay, now that I have this, she's trying to uh, find an onboard keyboard. Use a, uh, you do quite frequently, mostly at work though. Ah, ah, okay. Very cool. I need to, uh, I need to learn it more better. Okay, I need to hide this again. Oh, come on, there we go. So I'm just masking off these edges. And then these. I just want to make this sharper, thinner. And then I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to grow the mask. Let's see. Grow the mask and then sharpen it. Sometimes you can't tell if something is masked or not <laughs> until you actually try and move something. What I'm trying to do, let's see if this will work. No, dang it. Okay, here's another trick you can do. Um, so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to... <laughs> Zomax, you, <laughs> you cracked me up, man. I had a guy tell me that today. Why are you messing with ZBrush? Why don't you just use Blender? <laughs> like, uh, you know, I don't know. Okay, so with the Z Modeler brush, there's uh, transpose. So if you go onto an edge or a face, I don't know if you if there's a yep there's one for the for the the vertices, but if if you go on an edge, hold down space, hit transpose, and then you say edge loop complete, and you click on that. That's what I was trying to do. See how it masked everything except for that edge loop that goes all the way around the sword. Now what I can do is I can use the transpose tool with move selected and then right click and then it will go out. I'm actually gonna mask this part. It will move this out. See that? But I can put a little, see that little slight edge a little sharp edge all the way around the thing. That's what we want. And this looks really choppy and blocky right now. Wait till we smooth it down. It'll look, it'll look beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, I need to I need to zoom in here and see what's happening. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, let's clean this up. <laughs> So many new tricks. See, I do, I, I know enough about Z modeler to be dangerous. <laughs> That's it. 
Okay, I'm gonna stitch these points together. Stitch, stitch. Oh, come on, oh, cause it's uh, masked off, I can't. There we go. Oh. Why is that moving everything? Oh. If you, if you put your move, if you have your move brush selected and you make your brush go all the way down to one and you try to move something, it moves the entire object. So if, if you ever, if you're ever wondering like, why is it moving my whole object? It's because you're pushed it all the way down to one. Okay. Is that sharp enough? sharper so here's another thing oh let's see i have never understand how the transpose tool works in zbrush yes it's a it's a completely its own beast and uh in this in this course that i'm working on right now i have a whole lesson dedicated just to the transpose master and i go through every single little thing about it meticulously because i call it like the swiss army knife of manipulators because it can do just about anything you want it to um, but you have to you have to know what it can do before you can make it do it right so I mean the the lessons a little slow <laughs> there's a lot to cover but it's it's people like it that have checked it out so far so okay Z modeler I'm going to steal this polygroup color see this green right here I want this green to wrap all the way around the tip so then I can um, I can crease the edges around the polygroups. So what I'm going to do is go to polygroup, single poly. If you tap on this, see how it wants to change it to purple. But if I push shift and let go, it actually like eye drops that polygroup. And now I can put it on another face like so. And I can do the same thing to this tip. So I'm going to click here and push shift so it changes back to that color. And now I have it in my my polygon or my polygroup eyedropper. And let's see how this goes. Let's see. Um, I do blands it. I I make a gun with it, like a. Uh, it's a little pistol with a silencer on it. So I I go through it and kind of build it out. That way. Yeah, an eye dropper would be too. It'd be too too easy, right? It's got to be difficult. This is ZBrush. No, <laughs> I didn't say that out loud. <laughs> um, we, my my friends and I that use ZBrush a ton, we we always joke about it, ZBrush is so powerful. But in order to do things, it seems like you have to like stand on one foot and cross your eyes, and and then okay, now I can do it. You know. <laughs> so I'm gonna make the entire bottom part here one poly loop and, or poly group and how I can do that is if I hold down space I'm on poly group and if I choose flat island and then tap on here oh come on there it goes it will poly group that entire thing it looks like it put it in the same group as this which it might have so I'm gonna tap on it again and then I can hold down alt I can go alt 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 and change the poly group colors and it cycles through them like that. And since this, uh, the sword might be turned into a game model, I want to make sure that my edges are beveled, meaning see how I, when I push this in to the sword, now it has a 90 degree wall. And if I was to bake a normal map off of that, the the normal map rays would not see it because it's a 90 degree wall. So I need to make sure that the normal map will see it. So I want to go on edge and go to slide and go to edge loop partial because I want it to stop wherever there's a, a break. And then we'll see what happens if I slide this. Oh. Hey Alkeen. I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. I'll, I'll have to Google Translate that. But welcome to the stream. 
Okay, it looks like it's uh, it's only moving a little bit of it, not as much as I would like. So I'm just gonna have to move these points by hand. <laughs> okay. There we go. Now, the normal map will be able to see this. Okay, now that I've done all that, I'm going to crease the edges. So if I go to crease polygroups, which is under, I'll show you where it really is. That's my, my secret menu that I put everything on. Let's go uh, Oh, is that? Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay, so if I go to crease, no, 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 it's under geometry, crease. Then see this cre crease polygroups border. Before I do that, I want to set the crease tolerance down to three. That means it will hold on to the crease until you subdivide past the third level, and then it'll let go of the crease and it will create a nice bevel. We did this on like the, the tips of the boots and things like that, and I use it all over the place. So I'm just uh, reminding you guys how to do that. Then hit crease polygroups, and you'll see that now it has creases around all the polygroups I just made. Okay, and if I hit D, that's gonna, it's gonna be almost what I want. So here's D. And you'll notice some things aren't quite right. Um, first of all, I want this to be sharp and it's kind of rounded up in here. So I want to crease it. Also, there is a little peak going down the sword right here. So I want to crease that. And there's also a little change of direction right here. See that little peak? I want to possibly crease that. And there's kind of a crease down the center of this thing. See it right there? It actually goes inward instead of out like the sword and then um, and then I want to crease the very edge of the blade so we'll do that as well so let me hide everything again boom, 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 boom. okay and then for this one we'll actually use the crease in the Z modeler Crease, edge loop, complete. Then I'm going to hit D again to make sure it's divided. Oh, you know what? Uh, dynamic subdivisions don't work if something, if a part of it is hidden. So see how my, my handle is hidden, so it's not going to show me what it looks like. But I just creased around the edge of that blade there. And then I'm going to crease around this whole line all the way up. It looks like it changed directions up here, which I don't want. Okay, so I'm going to change that to edge loop partial. Just crease up to here and then hit it again up here. So hopefully went around the tip. Looks like it did. And then it went here and Let's see, I want to, I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna try creasing this and then seeing what it looks like. And I'm going to split the handle away from the blade in subtools. So all I have to do is go split hidden, which is under subtool. So it's right here, subtool, split, split hidden. Okay, and now that put it, put the handle in its own, its own group and you'll notice that this blade subdivided now right away. So if I hide the poly, poly loops, it should be subdivided. So I don't know why, okay. I think why this, this center, I'm pointing at my screen like you can see me pointing. 
<laughs> so I'm thinking why this center line didn't peak or crease is because it's on the same plane, on the same level as this line. So it has nothing to peak with. So I'm going to do a transpose right here again and edge loop complete. I'm going to do edge loop partial. Click right here and you can see it masked everything off except for that loop. Okay, and then I only want to raise it right here. So I'm going to mask off this lower section. Let's see, I only want to mask it off to, whoops. This is gonna be tricky because I don't wanna unmask it on the other side. See that it's unmasked on both sides. So I want to grab like this because I want this one unmasked because I'm gonna raise it up. And I'll mask the rest. And then I also want this one unmasked because I'm gonna raise it up. So if I hold down Control plus Alt and drag around that, it'll unmask it like so. Okay, so let's try this. Let's see, move and move. It makes for a pretty thick blade, but now we have the peak. Now if we shrink the whole thing down all together, um, it should should look fine. See now it has that nice sharp edge. See look, this is an example of how much you can get out of so few polygons. So if, if I hit control D, you can see how few polygons this blade really is. I mean there's hardly anything here. When you subdivide it, it gets nice and smooth and clean and uh, very cool. Thank you. Oh. oh, thank you so much. Here, I'll show you the, I'll show you the rest of the model here. Whoa, <laughs> I'm gonna handle the sword is. All right, that's not good. All right, here we go. <laughs> that's the rest of the model. <laughs> Mystic Duska, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. Oh, Carbix, I just barely saw your your uh, your note there, but thank you very much. Oh, okay, I gotta get sitting in this chair too long. Let me save this really quick. Uh, boom. Okay. Do you guys want to? Do you want a sneak peek of my? character that I'm going to be talking about in my course. Tell me if you want to see her. Okay, let me solo this. And thank you very much, Mystic. I appreciate it. Okay, I need to, uh, I need to match the sword a little bit more. So I'm going to pull this out and match that shape. So you guys that have watched that video today, the, my earlier video, uh, if you look in the little thumbnails in that very far right one, you can kind of see her, but I'll, I won't tease you that bad. I'll, I'll pull her up here in a minute. So do you guys remember a game back in the 90s called uh, No One Lives Forever? It was made by a company, a game company called Monolith. And it was kind of like a 007 spy in the like 60s, 70s era. I don't know if you remember that. Never heard of it. So I wanted to do, because a lot of people want to know essentially what I'm doing now, right? Like how, how do you model stylized characters in the Disney Infinity style or something similar to the Disney Infinity style? So I couldn't do a Disney character or, you know, I, I wanted to do f some fan art, but I wanted to do it in the style of Disney Infinity, but not perfect, you know, not exact. So I took a character from, yeah, it was a first person shooter like Half-Life. Yep. Yep, for sure. 
so um, I found, uh, well, a, a good friend of mine, his name is Joshua Black. He did, gosh, how can I, I'm just trying to think of how I can show you. I'm using uh, XSplit, and so I don't know how I can show you something that's, that's not in ZBrush because it's only showing ZBrush. I'll have to figure that out some other time. But for now, I can show you the model at least. So I save this. I'll go load the tool. Um, Z tools. Ba -ba. Okay. This one. Okay. All right, little preview. There you go. So you were asking about the gun. I teach you guys how to model this gun right here and how to do all this stuff and how to pose her, how to prep her for printing, all sorts of stuff. Thank you very much. How to pose her face. Yep. Let me show you one more thing. <laughs> Thanks. So here's the, I'll also show you how to do the game, the in-game model. So you're getting a preview on how to do a game, game ready geometry. You're asking about her mouth and her face and all that kind of stuff. Want me to zoom to her face? Sure. She should have, whoa, hold on a second. She should have some eye, let me turn on her eye material. And assign it, fill it with. Oh, cause I have two eyes showing, hold on. That's why. There we go. So this one. There we go. Okay, let me switch back to zero paint. There we go. And I teach you how to do this hair, all this stuff. That's why I'm saying when I I wasn't kidding about taking two years to, to make this course. <laughs> two years I've been working on this thing and I've started, I've started over three times trying to find the exact character that you guys could learn enough with that you wouldn't get overwhelmed with, if that makes sense. See, I think if I tried to teach you a character like this, it would be too overwhelming and it would get kind of boring, you know? So I wanted to get, to do one that was simple enough that you guys could understand but cool enough, you know what I'm saying? So, okay, let's see. Oh, thank you, Squid Tank. <laughs> Thanks, is what poly paint? So the material is a material, and the, but the color and the pupil is actually painted. And this is painted too. And then this is poly paint. All the orange and white is poly paint, so. Uh, now it's saving. It's taken a while. Okay. Thanks, Ash. Means a lot. So yeah, I go. I go over the entire process of all of it, all of it, all of it. So um, the Z, the the base material. It could be. I just pick zero paint. I usually, like I said, I I work in. Uh, I work in Skin Shade Four. This is Skin Shade Four. And this ships with ZBrush, so it's nothing. It's nothing special, really. So you don't you don't have to have zebra paint. That's just zebra paint is pretty much the only other material that shows your poly paint very nicely. Okay, like see the zebra paint right here, or zebra viewport. These are ones that are meant to help you see your poly paint. That's why earlier in the stream I said I, I recommended not 
to use materials to adjust your the look of your surface because it's kind of false. It's giving you a false sense of coverage. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, um, yeah, there's a little preview, <laughs> little little cheat, little preview. Um, should it always be a perfect sphere that or sphere that depends on the game studio uh, and what the characters are? Usually, yes. So, oh, thank you very much. Um, you usually you will want the eyes perfectly round because then it's easier to rig and it's easier for them to roll around in their sockets just like a real person would. But once in a while, you get cartoon characters that have really odd shaped eyes that get elongated or something like that. And what happens with that is you usually go, uh, you usually use what's called UV animating and you animate the UVs across the surface or UV sliding it's called. Like uh, for example, for the, for the cars video games, they have eyeballs on their windshields. So they're not really spheres, right? There's, it's a windshield with pupils that are and irises that move across the surface. And that's just done with UV animation. So there you go. Anyway, um, in the course, I'm not expecting you to model that character. That's just an example of a character that you follow along with me with. So um, do I have a web page with my work? Yes, I do. Uh, that's where 3D Aspie will send a whole bunch of links, the link master flash, right? <laughs> right, Aspie? <laughs> and thank you, by the way, Aspie. I have an art station. If you just look up uh, Shane Olson, our art station, you'll see you'll see where my uh, art station page is. Okay. And I'm also going to um, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to be sending this model that I just showed you to ArtStation as a real-time character model so you can see the wireframe, the maps, and all that stuff. So, because that is the best way to, that's the best way to display your model to potential clients and potential employers is employers want to see, uh, employers want to see your ability to make a low resolution wireframe mesh. They want to see how well you can make the maps. And of course they want to see how well you can hit a concept. So the best thing to do in my opinion is put your model up on ArtStation with a Marmoset or a Sketchfab viewer so they can see your work. A pretty, a pretty render will usually not get you work unless you're trying to do marketing shots. So that's my two cents for you. Um, okay. So I just, yeah, I don't, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know how to say your name. TJ Lux, I guess. Is that right? Yeah. It'll be coming soon and you can get the info here. I pasted this a few times tonight. 3D Aspie will probably beat me to it. There you go. Okay, TJ Lux, awesome. So if you if you sign up there, you'll get the, I just released the ver very first free video tonight. So you can go check it out. It's just a really quick preview and you can kind of see how I teach, which isn't much different than what I'm teaching now, except for it's, it's scripted and, you know, higher level production. And also I want to tell you guys uh, next Saturday, I'm going to be talking about ZBrush Core. So if you guys don't know what ZBrush Core is, it is, um, it's a light version of ZBrush. It costs either $100 for the strip down, or not strip down, $100 for the base version. And it costs, I believe, $200. And correct me if I'm wrong, you guys, because um, I, can't, I can't keep all this stuff in my brain, because uh, it's full of movie quotes. That's why. <laughs> That's why my wife gets mad at me because I, I can remember all the movie quotes, but I can't remember things that I, that I need. Anyway, I'm going to be talking about ZBrush Core uh, 
And I think with the, the version with the tablet is like $200. And uh, I'm, did I say Saturday? I meant to say Sunday. Sorry, just this normal time, this normal time. And, um, and then I'm also going to be streaming on my own on the pretty soon. So yeah, 21st, thank you. Yep, the 21st, which that's a Sunday, right? Is that a Sunday? Let's see, yeah, next Sunday. So uh, next Sunday I'll be talking about ZBrush Core and I will be telling you what is possible in that software to get you started and get you feeling good about, you know, it's, it's a really easy way to get into it and see if you're gonna like it without forking over the expense of the full program, you know. Oh, Rhino, so NURBS stuff? Is that is Rhino still NURBS and ArtCam? I'm not I'm not familiar with ArtCam. Um, will that help with the learning curve of ZBrush? So what will help you with the learning cur curve of ZBrush is art skills. Like your art skills will transfer, um, but you will need the tech skills will not unless you're familiar with box modeling. Like I'm making this sword using my. I've been a box box modeler or traditional polygon modeler for most of my career until I started learning ZBrush. So uh, the, the, <laughs> you want me to tell you the learning curve? I, okay, hold on a sec. Um, so yeah, there, it is NURBS and, oh, and mechanical tools. So like for making parts, like molded parts and stuff like that. Yeah, the, the, uh, the, the box modeling or polygon modeling skills will come in handy for sure. Oh, you do jewelry. Oh, you do jewelry. Okay, that's awesome. I'm trying to remember where there's a jewelry course. So I met this amazing jeweler that uses ZBrush to make his jewelry with at the ZBrush Summit last year, and he gave a panel on it. If you look up ZBrush Summit for last year and look up jewelry, I think it's on YouTube. You should watch that. It's it's awesome, and he makes some insanely cool stuff. So, 3D Intuos? I think you're talking about an Intuos tablet, right? Okay. So, <laughs> Aspie, what I was I, I always bring up uh, the ZBrush learning curve is pretty much it's hard because it's not like any other program that you're used to. So if you guys are familiar with the, the TV show Avatar, like the kids cartoon Avatar, which is more of like an adult cartoon because I, <laughs> I love it. I'm just saying it's an adult cartoon because I like it. But there's this, um, there's this earth bending city that is called Bossing Se. And it's the city that's this big round city and it's just surrounded by this wall. And inside the city is like nice green and lush and outside the city is all like desert and dry. And so I like to think like learning ZBrush, you start out in the desert and the wall is straight up. So it's very hard to learn. But once you get over that wall and you get in there, you realize the power that ZBrush is and you can create anything. And um, my goal with this course that I'm creating is to take you on the train through the wall. So you're essentially not having to go over the wall and helping you through. So you don't have to have go <laughs> over the wall by yourself with all the pain and suffering. So <laughs> that's my little spiel. <laughs> all right. Anyway, but I, it, it's, it's hard to learn, but once you learn it, man, because I mean, just look at ZBrush Central. They, there's insane, insane amount of art that's super duper good. And there's people learning it all the time and getting better and better. So <laughs> into us. Yes, um, here, hang on one sec. So, yeah, this is it right here. You can, so it comes with this tablet, this Intuos tablet, and it's, it's, a, it's a Wacom tablet. And uh, I, set, I set it up for my kids and they, they've been getting into it, you know? They're so, so good. <laughs> mesh bender. Now I gotta, I'm gonna have to make myself as a mesh bender. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's perfect. It was kind of ZBrush Core. They, yeah, 
let's see, I think they call it the raster drawing program into a Suminga. It's it's very single. It's very similar to the base entry level into a tablet. Yeah, for sure. It's not it's not their high end one, but it it does the job. It's awesome. Learned Rhino from YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's plenty of ZBrush tutorials out there too, but I mean, it just depends on what you want to do, you know. Okay, I'm gonna try and get this uh, this little peek here. We'll see what happens. I'm yapping too much tonight. But I'm glad you guys are, I'm glad you guys are uh, so talkative tonight. It helps. Okay. Let's see if that puts a, puts a peak in it. There we go. See, that's enough of a change of direction, but it looks like I need more geometry down in here. Yep. So, um, one really, I think you, TJ Lux, I think you might like, um, uh, Michael Pelfovich, he also streams on here and you should check his stuff out on, on ZBrush or on YouTube as well. He does some really great entry level ZBrush tutorials. They don't specifically talk about core, but they're, they're some very, very in-depth, like kind of, I think what you're looking for. Mine, mine's more about the, the art and then we learn the tech as we go. And Michael's is a little different approach. I mean, he, he approaches the tech and then puts the art on the top. So if that makes any sense, I don't, I, I hope I'm, <laughs> I hope I'm not uh, discrediting Michael's stuff at all, but it's, it's, it's really, really good. I, I've learned so much from him. He used to do some stuff on, uh, for Eat 3D. And that's when I first heard of him. It's really good stuff. Okay. I'm going to insert a single edge loop. I just need a little bit more geometry down here. Yeah, Wacom has a whole bunch of different tablets. And then of course they come out with new ones every year and new Cintiqs every year. Okay, and then I think I'm going to add a little bit more geometry up in here as well. slide this one down edge loop complete okay then I'm gonna go through and move them so the flow is correct all right my phone's going crazy Okay, sorry about that. I have a motion sensitive doorbell. So when my kids go in and out of my house, it goes crazy on my phone. Okay. Yeah, look at that. That's, that's coming together pretty nice. Let's make it not tan. <laughs> okay. Let's make it like a, a warmish gray. Then I can fill it, but make sure it's not, you're not on M, you're on RGB, and then you can hit fill, and it'll fill it with this color. Let's see. I gotta look at this and see if you're looking at my work. Is that my work? No, it's not. It looks like something I would do, but no. <laughs> okay. Let's see. 
course seems to be designed to get you accustomed to the style of working with ZBrush World. Yes. Yeah, so it lets you use all the primitives and Dynamesh and all sorts of stuff. Um, you bought one on eBay, a 24HD that's not working? Oh, man. 240, dang. Uh, yeah, adding new brushes and new materials is not possible. It's kind of like a, an educational version of ZBrush almost. It's, it's just enough to get you started and see if you like it. There's a free one also called Sculptress that you can use that, uh, oh, it works perfectly? I thought you said it didn't work. As, oh, you bought it as not working for 240. Now you, now it's working? That's awesome. I used to have a 24 HD and I, I upgraded. Thank you. I upgraded to uh, 27. Can you, can you pull that back out a little more? Thanks. Well, I was just putting a fan in this room because it's hot. Um, yep, thank you that I upgraded for a uh, 27. I kind of spoiled myself, saved up and picked up a 27 because that's what we used at work. And so I got used to it and switching and changing when you're going back and forth from doing freelance at home to, you know, working at work. It's just, I had to do it. I had to do it. There we go. Okay. So let's unhide this. And I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat and grab yeah, I splurged on the twenty seven. But you know, as much as I love the twenty seven, like I said in the, one of some of my other streams, I'm not I'm not really a fan of this thing because it moves around. I wish I could lock it in place somehow. You know, I might I might figure something out. And uh, let's see. Sorry for the questions. No, I want questions. <laughs> Last one, I promise. How are the SDLs that ZBrush puts out? Do you, they have to be ran through another program before they are 3D printed? Okay, so the STLs that come out of ZBrush are nearly perfect, nearly perfect. So when, uh, here's a tip for you. When you export a, yeah, they do need to be run through a slicer, but I think he's asking for, yeah, you, you can't really send them directly to a printer you usually send them to the printer's proprietary software. So like if you're going to a Form 2, for example, you have to send them to their Form software and then you put supports on it with their software. And um, they they usually have, uh, you know, they'll do repairs. You know, the, the software will do the repairs. It's usually there's holes and there's overlapping geometry because you triangulate the, the heck out of it to make it small and those little triangles in the tight spots will sometimes overlap each other and you can't have that or the 3D printer will not know what to do with it. So what we usually do is after we decimate, which means there's a there's this plugin called Decimation Master. It's right here. And what this will do is it will turn your entire model into triangles, which will make it small enough that a 3D printer can use it. So, but again, it'll create holes sometimes and it will create um, intersecting polygons and things like that. So uh, what you can do is, so you run Dynamesh to get rid of all the interior geometry and then you run Decimation Master to decimate it down to a very light file. Then here's the tip for you, before you export it as an STL, do weld points and close holes. So under under geometry, under modify topology, there's weld points right here. And if there's any points that are floating out in space that are next to another point, it'll weld them all together. And then do this close holes and go back and forth. I usually do that like four times, close holes, weld points, close holes. Then usually like nine times out of 10, that will fix most of your problems. So Sometimes the, sometimes the printing software will say, oh, there's some problems that, you know, that you'll have to fix, but most of the time that'll, that'll do most of the fixes for you. So I hope that answers your question. 
fix mesh integrity also works very well for fixing mesh errors like shared so where is where is that fix mesh integrity I'm learning something new from you today mesh integrity right here when did that happen where did this where did this come from what what this I've never seen this before <laughs> I honestly have never seen this. So you can check it and then fix it? Is it... When did that come? Is that always... That hasn't been in the original 4R7, right? Is it? Is it recent? Holy crap. It's been there for a while? Why have we... <laughs> There's a whole team of us using ZBrush every day to print stuff and we've never noticed mesh integrity. Holy cow, okay. Well, color me impressed, Ashley. <laughs> thank, thank you. So I, what, what do I know? <laughs> this, that just goes to show you that this program is so dang dense. It's, I mean, I've been using it for a good eight years and I don't, I don't even know half the stuff. Who even knows what I'm missing? Mesh integrity, what? I got to I got to tell the rest of my my infinity team about that one. I know 800 ways to do everything. So that's probably what like close holes and weld points does. You know, but I'm doing it manually and it it probably isn't nearly as good. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. Well, thank you very much for showing me that. That's awesome. A new thing Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna steal the eyeballs from the bracers. Hey, look at that, they're pretty close. This looks like, like something from Mad Max. Okay, so I'm gonna duplicate these wrist guards and then I'm going to hide everything, turn off symmetry, hide everything that is not the eyeballs. What? Oh, there must be, okay. And delete hidden. Then we'll move these eyeballs over. You still close holes, but mesh integrity gets rid of verts that are like sharing the same point so i guess that's what weld weld points does sort of but if there's yeah and lamina, yep so we use the software called magics and man that software is not easy to use it's super duper slow but that's the software that they wanted us to use for the envision tech printer to put our supports on and also has some mesh fixing algorithms and uh, the I find that the form 2 software is so much easier to use I don't mean to diss on magics or anything but man it took a long time to make our supports okay I'm going to weld this mirror and weld there we go yeah, Envision Tech magics. So, if you, TJ Lux, have you have you used an Envision Tech before? Have you seen those printers? They're oh, there's a free. What is it called? Is it is it Mesh Mixer? <laughs> we we tried Mesh Mixer. Mesh Mixer is super duper good. It's free from uh, from Autodesk, and that is awesome for hollowing out your models because you can put drain points and everything in there and it's free and it'll do it'll do mesh fixing and stuff like that but the supports in there aren't the best it because for a resin printer it puts the supports too close to the surface so uh the resin would stick and fill in the the gaps between the supports and the mesh itself so we couldn't use them otherwise it's super cool looked into getting an Envision Tech. Oh, the Solace. Yeah, Envision Tech's, the one we had was like $80,000, you know. 
it's so incredibly expensive. I mean, but but the quality that it put out was, I mean, you could print jewelry, jewelry, right, with it. So, I don't know if that the one you're talking about. I have not heard of a Solace. I'll have to check them out. But they're probably still industrial grade, right? Tree supports, yeah. You know, I'm super duper impressed with the form and the form two and the, the supports that that thing generates is super good. I haven't used it personally. Like I haven't cleaned up a model that's come off of a form two. So I don't know like how nice those supports are to clean up, but just looking at it, how nice it supports the actual model automatically. It's pretty crazy. But we had to, with using magics, we had to, uh, draw most of our supports in by hand because its automatic algorithm was not very user friendly. So it was a little difficult. Okay, I think I'm at the point where I want to I want to merge these pieces together and start smoothing them together. But I'm gonna I'm gonna put these little ear things in first. I miss those. And I want to, uh, I want to make this shaped more like the interior of the sword handle. See how the sphere is kind of sticking down into this negative space. And then this, this hilt is not very flat on the bottom. I want to make sure it's flat. So let's do that really quick before I merge these together. What are we doing on time? 10 o'clock almost. Okay. I support all my stuff in Rhino now. Oh, really? B9 support software isn't bad, though. Hmm. Interesting. You know, I've seen some people, I think, um, Victor Navone, I, he, he streams on here now. He just started. Um, I've seen, I believe, and I'm not, I could be mis, misthinking this, but uh, Victor Navone, he does a lot of 3D printing. He's over with Mold3D. Um, I've seen him build supports inside of ZBrush out of, uh, uh, Z spheres, like, and just make them inside here. It's pretty cool. So I have not tried that personally. Why isn't this moving? Intensity. The mask on. All right. What's going on? Don't crash. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what I did. Oh. Okay, hold on. Oh. Pump em, pump em city. <laughs> That's a cool name. I I think it's crashing, yes, but I'm I'm waiting for it, hoping it pulls out of it, but uh, I might have to restart really quick. We'll see. Uh, okay. Hmm. Um, I don't know how far back I saved it. it I have autosave on that autosaves every like 10 minutes or so. So I should have something very similar to this. Okay, I'm going to close it. And I'm going to restart it. Hold on. Look at my awesome background for a minute. <laughs> Come on back. There we go. Okay, let's see. Ba -bum. Uh, it's been a while back. Seventy-six. I don't know what happened. I know. Gah. <laughs> I'll have to, I'll have to not yap so much and just hurry and do what I did. 
Yeah, the big one. All right, how far back did I roll it? Dang it. Okay. Looks like all this is creased, and then this. Okay. Yeah, it's just I just have to move the eyes back over. It won't take me that long. And just add in that uh, geometry really quick. Sorry about that, guys. It no, it doesn't. It doesn't save in my project folder. It just saves it in the quick save folder. I have it set up that way. But no biggie. Okay, so I'm gonna save this though really quick. For reals. Okay, let's get back into it. I'm gonna be quiet for a minute and I'm gonna hurry and get it back to where we were. See how much faster I work when I'm not yapping. Making my chair squeak. <laughs> Gotta oil this thing. Or lose weight, one or the other. There we go. Gotta load my reference back in here. You guys still still going on like going on about printers at school. Let's see. So, TJ Lux, have you is are there any like consumer brand ones that you could use for jewelry? Is is the form too good enough? So you're saying the B nine for four to five k because that's I think. Was the form to like three, three or four grand, something like that. Okay, I'm gonna grab those bracers again. Mm 
duplicate. <laughs> oh man like I'm no more printer talk save it okay saving saved boom okay thank you here we go <laughs> Watching out for me. Whoop. Okay. I think we're back to where we were. Pretty cool looking squid guy. Oh no, it's, yeah, it's uh, it's resin. But it doesn't have a, it doesn't have a traditional vat of resin that you go down into. It actually like, it peels it off, I guess. Like it comes in and it's um, cured with like photo light rather than laser light, I think. I'm not exactly sure how it works. And then, uh, and then it peels it off the, the plate and then does the next layer, you know, brings in. So I guess it's a little easier to clean up at the end, but I'm not sure. I haven't used one. It's on my list. It's on my bucket list to get one of those things someday. Okay. This is where I was having problems last time. I was trying to move this thing. I'm going to save it. And it wasn't letting me move it for some reason. The Form 2. Oh, does a Form 2 have a laser? That's cool. Okay, now I can move this thing. There we go. All right. I have a uh, topological masking on. That means that whichever object I grab first is the object that gets moved. See how that just looks better? The flow underneath here and around. So now let's check proportions. Kind of see if we're in the ballpark. Uh, probably raise these up more into the face. The Moai, or the, <laughs> who comes up with these names? The Wan, Wan Hao? <laughs> I guess they're uh, Chinese machines or something, I'm not sure. I'll have to check them out. DLP are much faster than the SLA that do these systems. Uh, I 3D Aspie's gonna get mad now. He's like, stop asking 3D questions. <laughs> I'm done. Okay, um, looks like the, I'll put the eyeballs. I'll start. Uh, okay, the eyeballs. I'm gonna put more on the side of the head. 
give more space in between them like like this. So I'm looking at this the distance between the two eyeballs. And then the distance from the eyeball to the blade, like the upper eyelid to the blade. That looks better. Okay, cool. <laughs> Chinese machine. And why I think is American based. Okay, cool. Thanks for answering my 3D printer question. <laughs> okay, let me uh, make, I'm going to make these little, whatever those things are called, I don't know. I don't know my uh, my squid terminology or <laughs> octopus terminology, whatever you want to call it. But I'm going to use, let's see, what I'm going to use. I could use a cylinder, but it's a cylinder is a little too clean. I want to keep it organic, so maybe maybe just an appendage brush, and then I'll slice it off. Okay, for you ZBrush core guys. I'm going to show you something that is not in ZBrush Core, but how I can show you how to do it. So uh, the ZBrush regular, so 4R7, it has this clip curve brush that I use all the time, and I'll show you how I use it. Um, and you'll see you'll see me use it in the the next free video that's coming up in my course series. So see that I just clip that off. And then I can just push it into the head like so, and then just, you know, tweak it a little more. And that was super easy, super fast. And I made a cylinder that's a little organic. But ZBrush Core doesn't have that, so what do you do? Well, you can use the transpose line with move. Then if you right click and drag this little red dot right here, it will do pretty much the same thing, but it's interactive. See that? So as long as you have the transpose line lined up to how you want to slice it, it's essentially grabbing all of that geometry and smashing it down to that line. And then you can just push it into the head. So you can do that in ZBrush Core. You don't mind the chill stuff? D7 have prints here and you think they are poor resin parts seriously man i gotta see this stuff oh somebody asked if i was going to the zebra summit this year was it who was it a long time ago and i meant to answer that question sorry about that and the answer is yes if i can if i can manage it i really want to go it's like the highlight of my career year is going there and seeing all the amazing zbrushers Okay, I kind of want to push this tip in so it's like a cup. You can see all the geometry smashed down in there. See all of it? Just going to push this in, make kind of a cup, and then I'm going to. Smooth it down. There we go. That looks pretty cool. Oh, <laughs> you watch. What are you East Coast or where are you from? Oh, Ahmed. Okay, are you going to be there? Did Ahmed? Did I meet you there last year? Were you there? Because your name sounds awfully familiar. Let's see. I don't know how serious you are on no more 3D printer talk. We have a question. Can you use other resins with the D7 or more? They're limited with the resins they come with. 
Oh, oh hey, Grady. Nice. Uh, welcome to the stream. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of detailing on here. Because see, see how this, uh, as it goes around, it, it kind of has some edges on here. And I want to make sure I get that working. Whoa. There we go. Any UV cure resin. Oh, so, and you're not going this year either? I'm just using the pinch brush to pull the geometry together down this line. So then I get that hard, hard ish edge. And see how it kind of comes up the back of the cutlass, the blade up the back here. See if I can get that look going on without it looking too weird. With the shirt on the background. Oh yeah, it's like great, doesn't it? I didn't even think about that. Floating head, hello. Welcome. I, I, sh I guess I could have worn a blue shirt because the I have a blue I have a blue screen in the in the background that I'm cutting out. So if I wore blue, it would really look like a floating head. That's pretty funny. I didn't think about that. <laughs> like a genie, floating head genie. Oh yeah, I, I don't, I don't know if I'll have if I'll be presenting this year or not. Um, they haven't asked me. I I, pre I presented there two years ago. You can see my uh, presentation on YouTube if you look up Shane Olson ZBrush Summit. I did a presentation with Matt Thorpe. We talked about Disney Infinity. That was a that was a good time. Um, oh, hello, Marcy. Hello, Marcy. Um, this cannot animate like other 3D programs. This is more of a, a digital sculpting program. So this is meant for building characters and uh, vehicles and things like that. And then if you want to rig them and animate them, uh, you usually take them out elsewhere. Oh, you saw it? The mod? Cool. Okay, let's see. Z intensity. This program is called ZBrush, and if you want to try it out, there's a 45 day free trial. And I think the link is down below, and you can get it and try it out. Okay, I'm going to add some color. I think, let's see. some of this yellow fill just to kind of have it blocked in here <clears throat> looks like the handles of maroon Sometimes it's hard to grab these cylinders because usually you grab the verts and uh, yeah, it can go to Cinema 4D if you prepare it that way. So right now it's very high resolution geometry. So you would need to retopologize it at a lower resolution if you wanted to take it over to a program like that. 
Hope that makes sense. Okay. And I want to I'm going to thicken this up. Something like that. And then shrink it back down. Let's see. Oh yeah, for sure, Grady. That's, uh, I do that all the time as well. <laughs> Let's see, I actually want to. I want this hilt to be a little taller. This a little larger and then I'm going to pinch, use the pinch brush to uh, see how this kind of has an edge to it. I just want to make it have an edge. Oh yeah, sculpt just that's a pretty fun tool. It's more of a more of a kind of ho a hobbyist plaything than it is anything that you could use for real production. But it's it's a fun entry point into digital sculpting. Putting some uh, some plain changes on the edges of these guys, just for interest. I kind of want a plain change around here. This is looking looking a bit soft for me. Oh, Blender. Yep, you know Blender's come a long ways. I don't I don't really use Blender too much, but uh, I know I know a lot of people who have that have been successful with it. There's a lot of independent studios that use Blender. Oh for ZBrush, you think? That'd be kinda cool. One of his deep sea minor model kits I'm painting. Oh, let's see. I think he liked a piece that I did on Art Station. Oh, okay, maybe. Yeah, that's probably why I saw your name, Ahmed. Let's see. Oh, is that the default pinch brush? It's not. It's uh, it is my own. Um, it's based on. It's based on a one that a friend of mine made. Uh, if you're familiar with the Ma Cut brush, it's it's kind of a variation of that. And Ma Cut brush also does not come with ZBrush. 
But yeah, you can the link if you follow that link right there. Oh, hey, uh, 3D Aspie, that link has been updated to just 3dcharacterworkshop.com, not my Kajabi. So if you go, just here, let me let me let me grab it. Mm -hmm. There you go. Um, it's it's pinched with a higher brush modifier, but it ha it also has this brush alpha that really affects how it interacts with the geometry. Um, yeah, it's it's that that's part of it. The increase to the one hundred brush modifier. Yeah, that's. That's what uh, Malchus the Black did to it originally figure it out. Works awesome. I use it all the time. It's so good. Okay. time were we looking at about 1017 I can build that scabbard really quick I think well not really quick but I kind of want to pull this head back a little bit Let's see the extra little t details you just did looks really great oh thanks regenerator yeah, it, it really adds, you know, like those little details, super add. So what I'm looking for in the head is I was looking at the apex of the, of the skull and it was actually going up and then here I'll see it used to be like this. See how the apex was like here. I want the apex of it to, to peak on the, on the blade itself. So, and I also want the flow of the head to kind of go in this direction. So it kind of flows down through the sword like this. And so that's why I want to pull the skull back in space just a bit. So it's not just a perfect sphere. Then I want to do the same thing down here. So the apex kind of lines up with this. That way, um, it's uh it can if if you print the or if you manufacture the blade separately than the handle that way the the handle will actually like pull out of the mold so i don't know if that makes any sense but that's the kind of stuff i like to do and it's also you know for the for the design part of it okay I'm just kind of looking and seeing what else I could do. I might make the bl the blade a little bit wider up here. Okay. And see how see how the base of the blade it really tapers out and it tapers out. And mine does not do that, so let's see if we can get that going. This is this is an example of how you can also take a design and exaggerate it, and hopefully kind of plus it in the process, because you can get you can see what the original artist was doing, and. If you can see, if you can kind of catch that in your eye, you can say, oh, look at that. The base is getting getting wide. Maybe if I push it a little bit wider, I wonder what it'll look like. And now this flow, you can see it kind of goes, turns, goes straight, and then turns. So I want it to just be a nice arc all the way through. Save. Okay. 
Oh, there it goes. Just as you said that, it did an auto save. Okay, save as. And you guys that are just join joining the stream, you may not have seen the whole model. Um, let me show, show it to you really quick. This is just the sword. Let's see. Let me hide the sword and I'll show you the ruler or hide the ruler. So this is where we left off last week. And uh, I just started by painting her collar and turning these cuffs a little bit. And, uh, and now I'm just working on her sword. And then I'm going to work on her the scabbard. It kind of goes here. And then after I get that done, I'll probably work on the belts right here. So I get all that worked out. So, yep. I say I saved it and auto saved it. <laughs> so, good deal. Thank you. Okay. So what? There we go. Okay. So let's get back to the sword. Uh, thank you very much. And welcome to the stream, Art of Joe. Who did the concept art? Uh, Johannes Helgeson. So if you check out his art station, pre prepare to be blown away because that guy is phenomenal. He is really, really good. And he graciously allowed me to model this. Okay, let's work on this flow of this blade here. I really want to push it. Sometimes I'll follow the flow with my, with my wrist, like the, just kind of swing my natural arc wrist around something that I'm trying to get a flow of and just see if it's, if it's feeling correct, if that makes any sense. It might just be me being an idiot, but sometimes I like to do that. And now it looks like uh, it's coming off of the blade or coming off of the handle kind of weird. So I'm gonna rotate that back and it looks like I hid the eyeballs. I'm gonna move these down in the list down by my sword. That's another thing, that's how I like to organize my sub tools is eventually I'll get to where um, I organize them like, oh, Johannes, thank you very much. <laughs> Johannes, Yo Johannes. He probably hates me for saying that. I'm such I'm such an American. I'm sw I'm my heritage is uh, Swedish as well, but I I don't speak a lick of Swedish because it was my ancestor like four four generations ago. <laughs> so, but thank you very much. I'll I'll uh, pronounce it that way from now on. Thanks. Um, what was I saying? Oh, so my sub tool organization. What I'll do is I'll usually start at the top of the character. So like with her hair, I'll put her hair all the way at the top near near the ruler. So all the head parts, like the eyes, the hair, the head, all these parts will be up in the top of the list. And then I'll just kind of work my way down in my sub tool list. So then it's a little easier to find things. So uh, if that makes any sense. <laughs> nice, nice gif. Hello, Marcy. Oh, that cracks me up. Oh, cool. Thank you. Okay, let's see. Da -da. I thought you were impressed by my sub-tool organization. <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to, since I worked that flow, and then what I see, it was, it was kind of, it wasn't coming off of that hilt as nice, so I just wanted to rotate that back. Um, so can you export the mesh and put it in Cinema 4D? 
You can, but not really. There's some. There's a lot of preparation that goes into it before you can just push it over there. But yeah, you can. You can push the high resolution over there. But I don't know how many polys uh, Cinema 4D can, can hold. Oh, is it late? Okay. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. You, you held out for a long time. That's awesome. Thanks. And I will see you next time, I'm sure. But yeah, if you want to make if you want to make this like uh, riggable and animatable, it does take it takes uh, some effort in preparation. Now I'm going to make this blade thinner. There we go. He makes photorealistic renders. Oh yeah. Composites as models in Cinema 4D. Yeah, my uh, my my buddy Steve James, he will model out characters in here, and then he will use them in his illustrations, and then do paint overs. So you can use ZBrush for your. For your paint overs or your underpaintings, kind of like that, I think, what you're trying to describe. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the sword now. I'm gonna draw I'm gonna merge these three together. So now that's it's all just one sword, and then I'm gonna make the uh, let's make the hilt right here. Okay. So I'm going to append a star and then turn it into a box and then raise it up This is essentially I built it the same way that I built the uh, blade. Let's kind of start rotating these into place. Mm. I'll chop that up in a minute. Need to make sure this is its own poly group so I can extrude it with the Z modeler brush. Oops. Poly group all. There we go. Oh, you found Steve James. Cool. Thank you. He does a lot of instruction on uh, for, for Pixel Logic for ZBrush. So if you go to ZBrush Central and you see those pictures down below the top row, a lot of those are his. So I'm going to try and make this act like a real scabbard that the sword can pull out of. So I'm not... Just got to be careful. I'll build this uh, tip, this bronze brass tip, whatever. I'll build that separately. Same with this end here. And then I'll wrap it around. Then we can just come back in here and insert edges. I 
I'll usually like mask off an edge loop like this and then invert the mask and that way I know that I have just that edge selected. You can use the transpose inside the Z modeler too, but it's a little slower. Oh, what does a pen star in the box? Oh, do you want me to redo that again? Okay, so usually when I, when I, gosh, my eyes are burning, sorry. Ugh. I've been looking for too long. <laughs> okay, so if I want to start something new from a box or like a sphere or a cylinder or something like that, I'll either do one of two things. I'll either use my insert multi-mesh, which has a whole bunch of primitives, or if I want to start something that is at the center of the, the ZBrush world. So if I turn on the floor and you can see the grid here in the center of the grid, the center of the ZBrush world is right here. Okay. So if I want to create something that is, is uh, centered on that world, it's kind of like creating new geometry in Maya or something like that. Well, what I do is I append a, just a basic star and it doesn't matter which one of these objects you append because you're just going to replace it in a minute but i just go i default to a star i don't know why it doesn't matter so i pick the star and see how it puts the star on zero zero so it's right down there let me turn off transparent okay so that's there then if you go down make sure you're on the new star make sure this is highlighted so it's active and then go down to initialize and then you'll see some geometry that can be made here. So you can make a cube or a sphere or a cylinder facing one of these directions, like this direction or this one or this one, or a cube or a sphere. And then what these numbers mean is how many times it's divided. So right now it's two, two, and two. You can do say like a five, an eight, and a one and hit cube, and it'll make that. See that? So it'll be five across, eight up and down, and then one deep. So this is a great way to make really quick base geometry to start from. Um, and I will usually, that's how I made the cube to start with. So does that answer your question? <laughs> There's it, that's it. Easy peasy. And you got to be careful because if you initialize that, that will replace anything in your subtool slot. So if you're working hard on a model and you, you want new geometry, make sure you make a new subtool and you append like a star or something because it's going to replace it no matter what it is. It'll overwrite, like, say, these pants. It'll just overwrite them and make a new box. So don't do that. You know how to control where the insert mesh objects are positioned when inserting them. You only control them by hand. You can't control them numerically. So, oh yeah, who's uh, who do you know? Which one? Scott or Chris or or Breadwig? Oh, Chris, awesome. Yeah, she's great. Let me hide this floor. Okay, so uh, yeah, Chris does a lot of stuff for Daz, I think. Right, yeah, she's super duper nice. What a, she's awesome. Okay, so to insert a multi-mesh on top of this right now, if I select this brush, and I, I can select any of these, say I wanted to make another cube, or a cylinder or something like that. This is the best, this is the best you have, is you click on like one of these dots and then drag out. See how it's like manually twisting. You can hold down shift to snap it and that's about the best you get. So you don't really, you don't really get a numerical insert if that's what you're looking for. 
Uh, it's more of like a like a best guess. And you can turn on symmetry and do two of them, and then snap them. So it's basically you grow it out on a vert. Oh, you did a blender course. Nice. Very cool. And here's another trick. See how where I ex extruded this, it put it into its own poly group. Well, say I want these all the edges to be in their own poly group. I can use um, group by normal. Hit that, and you can see now that it automatically grouped all the edges in their own groups by normal. So that's that's pretty cool. Quick way to poly group things. Because then I can crease these edges really fast, and it's just really quick. Okay. So now I want to make, I'm going to make this little, see this little leather band right here? I'm just going to make that really fast. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to duplicate this scabbard, select it. I'm going to hide the other one. Then I'm going to insert okay, an edge loop to the thickness that I think it's going to be, like that. Then I'm going to hide everything that's not that. So here you go. And then delete it. And then I'm going to scale it up. Let's show the sword again, or the scabbard again. Then I'm just going to scale it from its center out a little bit. Then I'll grab the Z modeler brush and I'm going to hit Control W to put the whole thing in its own polygroup. And then uh, extrude polygroup all. There it is. Now what we'll want to do is make it not so not so rigid and stiff. It's like perfectly squared CG looking thing. So I just want to manually by hand start adjusting it so it's not so perfect. Chaos is your friend. Add chaos whenever you can, and it'll make your models look better. So I want to keep this this edge to this edge right here turning nicely. See if I hit D, it just looks like what's happening, right? D is dynamic subdivision. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crease these edges. Let's go to crease and turn this to three. And then crease polygroups, and then hit D, and it looks better. But it doesn't look, uh, it doesn't look like I want it to. So what I want to do is add a few more loops right here, so it'll hold that curve a little better. Oh, scenes too, cool. So do you do stuff for Daz as well, or just the Blender thing? Then I'm going to transpose this line, edge loop complete. Otherwise it'll just be too sharp now. See, it's too sharp. I wanna push it in. There we go. Oh, come on. Grab that edge. Sometimes you have to go back to the low resolution and then uh, select the edge and then hit D again so you can see what it's doing. I'll tell you how I've been looking at some interior renders by some winner. <laughs> yes. Yep, it looks like it's Uncanny Valley, right? Like perfect CG, like some robot made it. You always want to try and get a a taper in there for that very reason 
or some kind of a thick to thin or see my my edges are are perfect thickness and it's okay for the most part when you're doing man-made things like like a gun or a sword or something i mean if, if the sword was more man-made than that i i guess more rigid man-made items right so uh the like a gun or something you you want those symmetrical and all nice and perfect cg but even a gun would have its nicks and bruises and things like that in it like its wear and tear uh but you want to add interest so like for example what i could do here is i could take this and just slightly move it like so and it's a little more interesting now i could do the same thing to the other side and just kind of rotate it so it has has kind of a gradual slope and I could bring it in so it has kind of a taper like a swoop you know and it's just more interesting let's see oh how did you make the smooth edges so I'm using what's called dynamic subdivision it's right here dynamic subdivision underneath geometry and all it is, it's a preview of what it will look like when you subdivide the mesh. So I don't know if you're familiar with subdivisions, but uh, that's, yeah, that's, um, it's like hitting the number three in Maya. It's a preview of what the subdivisions will look like. Okay, let's see. The transpose widget can control the orientation of the insert mesh. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's after you draw it, you can complete, because it'll mask off the rest of your model. So whatever you draw, it'll actually put the transpose tool right on the draw orientation. It'll put it right where it needs to be and then you can start to move it around from there. That's pretty cool. So newbie question, when I have two sub tools, one huge and the other small. When I work in the small and try to pan zoom. Okay. Is there a better way to ignore the big one? Are you, you're just talking about orbiting the camera around, right? It's, it's super easy. What you can do is um, all you have to do is tap on the surface where you want your core camera to orbit. So, for example, if I tap out here, see this little point? If I just tap. Sorry, it has to be active. Tap. Now, the, see how the camera is orbiting around that, that tip now? I think that's what you're talking about. And see, now I want to orbit around this, this hilt nub thing. Just make it active. See the little red dot now? And if I just tap, now it'll orbit around this end and ignore the, ignore the tip way out here. So all you have to do is, all you have to do is uh, make your large or your small subtool active and then just tap where you want the camera to orbit so it, does that make sense i think that's what you're asking for if you hold shift while inserting the mesh it will align the mesh the same position as your transpose widget was at what okay i gotta try this this might be something i don't know this is another zbrush gem okay we're gonna try it we're gonna try what Blue Fire Sound may have found something new. It's like a it's like a, a gem. Okay, here we go. So let's put this transpose tool kind of off in space. Let's see, off in space, like at an angle, an obvious angle, like this. Then grab this and grab a cylinder, drag it out, and then hold down shift. No? Am I doing it wrong? Because this is just aligning to the surface. Aligning to the surface. Drag it. Whoops. Because I think it just tries to align to whatever surface you're you're drawing it on no like this 
right drag it then you hold shift that will just try and snap it to the world uh, okay hold on a second I think I, I found out what you're trying to say now okay so see it's like this right the transpose tool is like this then if I drag this out and then I hold shift yeah now it's working I don't know why it wasn't working when you when you told me the first time it was just aligning to the surface that is cool that is cool because there's a lot of times when it's done this and I've tried to snap it and it snaps in some bizarro location like I wanted it to snap to the world now I know why now I know why that's a good find okay so now if I just if you tap on the surface with your transpose tool active it will align itself to that surfaces uh, normals like this then if you drag this and snap it then it will snap to the surface like that but if you happen to have the tool like rotated at a weird angle like up in space like this then you draw it out and then you hold shift why isn't it doing it see it's not doing it now what gosh dang it zbrush I think it's getting it from somewhere else because okay so watch this if I drag it out on this surface and then hit undo and then I drag it out and hold down shift what the crap I don't know ZBrush is weird sometimes <laughs> I'll have to ask Joseph Drust because I it's doing it now it's snapping it to the surface right or to this line but why wasn't it doing it when I first tried it so anyway, okay. Uh, I don't know if you found a bug or not. I think there's something to be said about it. Whatever you found, there's, I think there's something in there that's, that is meant to be that way, but it's not like uh, apparent right away. So there's gotta be like a step-by-step a, a -step method of how you actually get it to snap to that transpose line. And I don't know what it is. So we'll have to find out, excuse me. What I mean is huge subtool covers the empty space so it prevents me from orbiting when clicking. Oh, you mean like like you're clear up in its face? Like you're zoomed way in? So it's huge? And it prevents you from like uh, navigating? There's So there's two things you can do. You can hit F to frame your model like this. And if it's, if it's too, are you using a Cintiq? Or, uh, or, a, or a tablet. Because if you're using a Cintiq, you can use the right-click navigation, which uh, I've set my pen to right-click right here. Then if it's zoomed clear in like this, then it, my computer might have a hard time. Like this, right? Oh, come on. Okay. Then if I rotate it, using right click I can rotate it but if you're using a tablet you have to go in this gutter see this gutter right here this white line you have to go in this gutter to rotate your model or to zoom it in and out so I does that make sense is that what you're after okay let me know so does it only work on the live service surface so you, you, you're talking about that snap to the surface thing again? Uh, um, I was doing it on the live surface and it wasn't, it was, I'm gonna try it one more time. This is the live surface. I, I have it at a weird angle. I'm gonna go to my insert mesh, drag it out and then hold down shift and see how it's not snapping. So if I undo that and then drag it out, it's still not snapping but if I come over here on the non live surface drag it out at some weird angle like this and undo it then when I come back to the live surface drag it out then hit shift that's when it works it's really weird so that's how I could get it to work so it's like it's one of those if you stand on one leg and you cross your eyes and you call your mom then it'll work <laughs> it's just one of those ZBrush things I don't know I don't know if it's an intended thing or if it's like a 
Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, that gutter, that gutter is, is handy when it comes to when you're zoomed clear in and you can't navigate. It's You just do it in the gutter, navigate in the gutter. But honestly, that, uh, yeah, you got to hold your mouth right. Come on, saving file. There we go. Okay. Save as. Okay, we're saving it. All right. So let's uh, let's crease these edges on this guy. Crease polygroups, and hit D, and it'll make it smooth. It'll look better. Yep, nice and quirky. <laughs> For sure. Okay, these these edges on this scabbard are very very sharp. Um, I kind of want edges that look more like this band. See this band edge? So I'd go in there and I'd bevel these these edges out. It's getting it's getting kind of late and close to being done. So um, I'm just gonna put this. Uh, I'm gonna put this tip on really quick. Oh, you know what? Is uh, is Ahmed still here? If you are, say hello. I was gonna I was gonna show you something with uh, Z remesher, really quick. I think you were asking about the in the uh, the mouth the mouth cavity. So I was gonna show you. Why not saving as a Z project? It is smaller as a ZTL. No, it is smaller as a ZTL. Yeah. Um, don't. That's. <laughs> so that's actually my first lesson in my course. Like my very, very first lesson is I recommend saving Z tools, not Z projects. The only time I use a Z project is as my starter file, as my ruler. So see this ruler right here? This is the only Z project that I use. And I start with this every single time. So when I first open ZBrush, I'll double click on this and then it'll come in and then I'll load my Z tool into that file. That way it kind of resets ZBrush, it clears everything out. It clears out all the Z tools because if you're saving a Z project, it's saving all of your tools every time and your files can get gigantic. So, but that being said, Z projects also save everything. They save your your brush settings, they save your your current layout and everything. So it depends on what you're doing at the time. If you want to like save where you're at, your progression, and you're going to come back to it, then you can do a Z project. But I usually do Z tools. So okay, let me show you guys really fast. While blocking out, excuse me, while blocking out a character, let's do a. Um, I'm just gonna draw out a sphere on the bottom of this sword and then I'm gonna separate it. Let's see. Okay, split hidden. So now it's just in its own subtool by itself. And let's see. Let's look at it from the front. So say I'm going to make a mouth cavity in here. Also, there's a slight possibility Z project may drop your tools to the canvas. Um, you can do that anytime. Uh, oh, you're, you're saying like in the save file itself? Well, you can always draw it back onto your canvas and then clear your canvas if it does that, but that's, that's weird. It, that's kind of a bug. It shouldn't do that. It's crazy. But yeah, I just always save a Z tool. Be safe. <laughs> so I think Z projects came from people um, crying about why oh does it actually lose the tools yikes yeah that's another huge reason um, because well not to get into it too much but uh, when when ZBrush first started you know it, it was a hobbyist tool and you know the programmers named the meshes tools and people coming from other programs just could not get their head around that why is it a tool why is it a tool why why can't I just hit control save and so there was a big outcry of users saying, I just want to save it, you know, just like Photoshop or something. 
Um, and so they, they answered the call and they did their best, you know, to make something that would save all their stuff. But uh, it's just, just say, the Z tool was the original thing to save and I believe it still is. Sorry, let me, let me focus on what I'm doing here. Okay, I'm gonna make a, a mouth, like a Muppet mouth cavity. I'm just pulling this in really quick. And what you can do after you pull this in is just simply Z remesh it now. See how it's all it's all stretched out and weird. So then you can just go to uh, geometry, Z remesher, turn your poly count way down to like one. This is this number stands for thousand, so that's like one thousand polys. So let's hit it and see what it does. So that's still too many polys, but you can kind of see what it's doing now, right? So let's undo that. I'm gonna drop it a little bit, like 0.5. Hit it again. And then even lower, let's go 0.1 even. There we go. So you check that out. Instant mouth cavity. Then you can just close it. It's really flat. Let's make it round rounder from the front. Then once you get it too close, what you can do is like uh, use the inflate brush, just kind of come along here and inflate it till it closes. Boom, mouth. <laughs> you can come in here with a pinch brush and make lips. Make a nice kissy face. Give it a smile. There you go. <laughs> yeah, so, no, yeah, after you do this, you don't want to Dynamesh. If you want to keep that mouth interior, don't Dynamesh it. So, glad to see your new tutorials and all. Your Gumroad beginner tutorial helped me quite a bit for a couple, a couple years ago. Thank you very much, Bitey Thing. I'm so glad that uh, that you're anxious for it. Um, I'm I'm so excited. I've been working on that thing, this new course, two years since I since I basically made that Gumroad course with that frog. I've been working on this new course for two years, and I've put my heart and soul into it. And I'm excited to uh, get you guys get you guys into it. Yeah, there's uh let's see. Are you going to beat me to it? Aspie again. <laughs> so, I just put out my first free video to in the in the free video series. So, it's like uh there'll be three free videos leading up to the launch of my course and uh then there'll be a a nice overview long video to show you exactly what the course comes with, what it covers, all that stuff. So um, I'm super excited. And if you sign up to watch those videos, you'll be on the, the mailing list and you'll get all the stuff. So, oh yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for telling me. Oh, I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. And if you're, if your emails get kind of out of whack, the course, just so you know, it's going to be open on, uh, on next Sunday. That's when the court, the cart will open, and that's when you can buy it. Is next Sunday, so uh, and then it'll 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 let you know when how long it's going to be open. So, because I can't take on too many students, I'll be overwhelmed. This is a uh, it's I'm calling it a casually mentored course. So it's not like an eight week course and then it shuts down. You know, you're not you don't enroll for it and then you I mentor you every week and then it shuts down. It's I want I want it to be available for more people for longer. So it's a, it's a at your own pace course. And then when you need feedback, you can post in our closed Facebook group and get feedback, you know, when you need it. So it's, it's casual mentor. <laughs> That's what I like to call it. So it's 90% ZBrush focus. Yes. So, um, it, I, you'll see in the third video that's coming, the third free video, some of the other stuff that that I'll be covering as well. So that will be coming, but yes, 90% ZBrush. And that's, 
because this is where I do most of my work is right here in ZBrush. So, because you can pose your characters, you can print your characters, and you can couple it with uh, KeyShot to render out your marketing, your nice beauty shots. And I'm going to cover that. And it's yeah, pretty much A to Z is what is what it covers. So that's why it's big. <laughs> Um, character modeling is one thing you want to work on. Yeah, that's the majority of it is the character modeling. So, um, but there is, you know, how to make a game character out of your ZBrush model at the end. So, and once again, next week, I will be doing the ZBrush core broadcast. So you can come back and watch that if you're interested. Um, I'll be covering how to use ZBrush core, how to get into it, all the, the light stuff. Um, I'm not revealing the price of the course until I actually launch the course, so you'll have to you have to wait and see. <laughs> but it's a it's a it's a good price, I think. But um, no, only only the the three videos leading up to the course launch are free, not the entire course. So um, if you want to try out ZBrush, there's a 45 day um, trial that you can get. It's the link is down below. And if you want to learn more about ZBrush, check out Ask ZBrush on Twitter and YouTube. And there's also ZBrush Classrooms and ZBrush Central. Go check out all of those things. Let's see, what, what time are we at right now? Come on, 11, okay. Awesome. So I hope you guys learned something tonight. Um, yeah, I, I didn't spend two years on it to give it away, I'm sorry. Um, and I also just got laid off recently, so I have all the time devoted to you guys. I'm doing some freelance work, but most of my time will be spent um, helping helping all of you guys. So, the, and like I said, I've, I already have some beta testers in there that are doing some fantastic work. I can't wait to show you guys that stuff. So, um, super excited watch out for the, the next video will be dropping on wednesday so watch out for that and uh thank you guys for watching until next sunday i'll see you and we'll be talking about zbrush core all right thank you and take care and good night have a nice rest of your weekend which is about an hour's worth <laughs> anyway have a nice week take care